Hi there, it's Jeff Harrison at MacroMonster.com. I want to show you how I would rebuild some artwork like this. We can see it's a photo that's not quite straight on. Resolution's a little bit rough if we zoom in on it. And uh, this is actually pretty typical for some artwork that customers sometimes bring into the shop for getting rebuilt. So we're going to use a variety of tools in CorelDRAW and I'm also going to use Corel Photo Paint. So make sure you have that installed if you want to follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is get this straightened out so that we're rebuilding something that's uh, you know more resembling how the artwork would look if it was straight on as a picture. So I'm just going to select it, look up on my toolbar for the Edit Bitmap button, left click that, and we're going to use some of the distortion tools in Photo Paint to get this this image straightened out. So I'm going to press Control D and up in my Object Stalker that's going to duplicate the background layer and this is so that I can use those distortion tools in a moment. I'm just going to draw out a square here starting from one of the points using control to hold it down to be a perfect square. I'm going to make it a little bit transparent and let's see here. You know what? I'm not sure if that might have been actually a perfect square. I'm just going to drag this out so I get those top two points something like that. Now if we go down to the bottom object click it again here and then we're going to use, make sure you see those circles on the outside corners like that. We're going to just stretch so those red tips of the sign match up with the uh, uh, rectangle that I just drew there. Click again a couple times until you see these arrows and that allows you to do a bit, bit more fine tuning on the corners like that. And you could, maybe you'll see where I'm going with this. Now if I double click it'll keep all those transformations and get rid of that gray object. Flatten by Control Shift down arrow. Press Control S to save this back to Corel Draw. Close down Photo Paint, and now we've got an image that's uh, more straight on. There we go, looking good. So uh, what we're going to do now? I'm just going to drag a copy over to the right by moving it over and hitting the right mouse button. It creates a duplicate. I'm just going to keep that over there for a second because I want to isolate this little crawfish inside there. So what we're going to do for that, I'm just going to quickly crop it down a little bit here. We just want, I'm just concerned about the crawfish for now. Launch that one into Photo Paint by itself. And let's see what we got here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and convert that to grayscale. I just have a button, I have a button up there to convert that quickly. You can find that under your adjust menu, uh, actually image menu, and then convert to grayscale. I just, as you can see, I've got a lot of handy icons set up for the kind of work that I do. I'm going to press the Control T key combo to rig up my tone curve dialog. Convert this to straight. Drag a line down there. Drag a line up here. And uh, before I do that, actually, I'm going to increase the resolution of this by going to Image, Resample, and let's see here. How about, I don't know, maybe 800. So it's looking pretty rough there, but if we can we can sharpen this up a little bit here now. Go to effects, sharpen, unsharp mask, something like that a little bit. Control T will bring up our tone curve dialog. Just gonna get a lot of contrast here. And we want to try and preserve those little thin antennas on the the animal there if we can. Uh, maybe something like that. Just gonna back out a little bit. All right, let's say we're happy with that. I'm just going to get rid of those, those excess little black uh, pieces there. You can hit your X key to bring up your eraser tool. Yeah, just get rid of those. We could get rid of them now or later after the tracing process, but either way, it's gone. Get rid of this little glitch in there. You could go ahead and convert to one, one bit if you want by clicking on uh, or going to image, uh, convert to black and white, choose line art, Control S. Actually, before we go back, I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm just going to fill in the blanks here for this antenna. We could do it here or we could do it later. Let's see. Kind of a quick and dirty approach here. All right, so what we're going to do now is actually trace this using um, Corel's Power Trace. Go to Trace Bitmap, Outline Trace, and we could go to High Quality Image. And we want to make sure our colors are simply black and white like that. Let's see if our settings are look, kind of looking good here. You can play with these settings a little bit. But you can see how it's already smoothing out a lot of those rough edges like that. 
for our purposes here, we'll say that we're happy with this. Now, when you trace with Power Trace, it often will keep a copy of the bitmap behind the scenes. Just make sure you get rid of that. We also have, uh, I'm just going to ungroup this. We've got the white piece there. We don't need that at all. All right, so we've got our crawfish. I'm just going to set that out of the way for a moment. Select the sign there. Press P to center to the middle of the page. And then I'm going to drop in our text. Just from experience, I happen to have a pretty good idea what kind of font that is. It looks like Swiss or um, something like that. I think of my system here, what do I got? It's pretty close. Uh, let's try something like this. See if that's kind of on the right track there. I'm just going to put it up to, against the cor top left corner of the text, move it in a little bit. This is obviously, it's, it's stretched text, and, and I'm going to move it down there more like this. Make an extra little copy down to the bottom. We're going to go ahead and apply uh, this uh, envelope tool. And move it in there. We can see it's pretty close already. CurlDraw is so awesome for doing this kind of stuff because, it, as you can see, it's pretty quick. So down here, the reason I did a copy is so that I have my other chunk of text fairly close to being ready to go already. Crawfish. There we go. Slide it over like that. And text is a little bit different, but I imagine a customer in this situation wouldn't be too upset if we changed it just a notch like that. All right. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and center those two things together. Zoom in on this. Actually, we could go ahead and scale down our crawfish, center to the page by pressing P. Just going to scale it up a bit here. And okay, so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle out like that. You can see whoever did the original artwork here. They didn't really center this line with the uh, the oval in the middle. That's probably something they intended to do, I'm guessing. Maybe not, but I'm going to go ahead and do it my way instead because sometimes as a designer you have the ability to fix things that other designers may have unintentionally couldn't center properly on their own. You just never know. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that that should have been centered. And I'm going to shift select the um, oval press E to center it like that. And then move this one over here. I'm going to go ahead and um, center the oval to the rectangle by shift selecting the rectangle. Pressing C. And what I'm going to do now is um, we could contour outwards a little bit on this rectangle. Maybe something like that. And I just want one single contour. Maybe one inch. Oh, that's going to be way too much for what we're doing here. How about point 0.2? That's pretty close. Break that apart. Now we're going to do a little bit of welding here. Uh, I'm going to select that small rectangle, shift select the next small one, and then the oval. Then up on your, your uh, property bar, I've just got uh, press weld. I, I sign a hot key, this is my W key to do that normally. And then we are going to uh, trim into this rectangle using this. So we, sh we select this one, shift select this rectangle, and then we use the second button in like that. Then we can get rid of this one. We could go ahead and grab, if, if you really want to be adventurous, you could select both pieces of text. Let's see if I can grab them here easily. And grab this one, I'm going to send that to the back for the moment. grabbing those pieces of text there, and shift paging up on them to move them to the top of the stacking order. I'm going to go ahead and press Control Q on those, or even better, Control L to combine them. That'll automatically give you something like that. Okay, and then it's just a matter of filling in some colors here. I'm just going to adjust our crawfish a little bit more. Something like that. You can make that red. Make this red. Get rid of that outline. I'm going to make this other uh, background piece just yellow. And now we can track down our bitmap in there. Get rid of that. Get rid of any outlines. 
And if we, we can now see that we're actually ready to vinyl cut this, um, I could weld this uh, crawfish to this other red piece if I wanted to. And what that does is now we literally have two items in this whole Corel Draw file. If we go to the Object Manager, come on back, there we go. Literally only two items in the whole file, so if we could actually vinyl cut this and weed it out and you've got a sign. So that's just my uh, crazy way of working and it seems to work pretty fast. I don't know how long this video was, but without having to explain it, as you can tell, it'll probably be just a few minutes to get this ready to go. Okay, enjoy.